back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a couple of nerds in love that love reviewing movies, especially superhero movies. Right now we're re-watching, reviewing, and scoring all the DC movies in the DCEU. That's the DC Extended Universe. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, we're doing a little bit of a different segment tonight. Um, we're changing it up with a new format of Love It or Leave It. We're still utilizing our ranking sheet that we did throughout the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe yep. uh, and have already started to do on the DCEU, but to bring you our impressions a little bit quicker about that and to expand on our conversations, we have divided the categories into five main parts with very quick impressions of whether or not we love it or leave it and why. Now on to our review for Suicide Squad. And our first category, as always, is about our lead characters. So our lead characters in this film are Floyd Lawton, also mm -hmm. known as Deadshot, and of course the now all-famous Harley Quinn. So for these characters, I love it. I love them both. Harley Quinn is the quintessential crazy hot girl. She's super sexy, but she's probably gonna murder you, and she is just not all there. I also loved our lead characters. Harley Quinn is one of those roles that I think is, it's risky to take on, because it mm -hmm. is so iconic. And you have to balance the crazy and the hotness in a way that makes her still appealing to an audience, because she is totally batch crazy. Will Smith, he is great when he is able to play a sarcastic but kind of a badass uh, type of type of role kind of like in bad boys I think his anti-hero nature was perfect for this and I think it is a, a bigger strength of his villain love it or leave it so unfortunately for me this was a leave it I thought that they had at least somewhat of an interesting story with dr. moon and Colonel Rick flag and uh, Amanda Waller's use of Dr. Moon to get to the Enchantress. The villains will leave it for me as well. I think that, uh, yeah, the, the, hip, the hip little shimmy dance she does as the evil swung around her, that is, I thought that was really weird. It was an odd choice. This character was, it was, it was a powerful character. There was a lot at stake. So this villain should have been better. No, no relatability, no real uh, grounded story to make it interesting. It was just kind of like, Here's a monster to take over the world. Done. I think a really compelling story would have been made if it wasn't really the Enchantress that was our super villain, but if it was really Amanda Waller. There's so much story that's mm -hmm. right for that, but it doesn't really get the big climax moment that it should because the climax moment goes to the Enchantress who really has not been set up as anything other than, here's your monster. Mm -hmm. Next up is the script. If I have to choose between love it or leave it, I choose love it. All of the writing that was there was really elevated by the, the actress that they chose, which the casting mm -hmm. really was spot on. Harley Quinn is anything but stereotypical, even if she is a sexified villain. Harley Quinn is the one who actually strips the Enchantress of the heart. And the Enchantress is our villain, so we also have a female villain. I was borderline love it or leave it on the script. I ultimately, ultimately went to a leave it. The plot had a little bit, a lot to do with that one. Um, the Enchantress just all of a sudden randomly deciding at this point in time to suddenly get her heart back and like open up like her brother seemed uh, like an odd choice. Like why is she, why is she doing that now? Moving on to side, side characters. characters. Now there were a ton of side characters in this one because it's a suicide squad. Unfortunately for me, this was a leave it. Our two leads were really great, but then the supporting cast just felt like caricatures. Like you have the the, the rough and tough Aussie. I also think that the side characters in, the, in this one were leave it. Um, we talked in Batman vs Superman about how much richer that story would have been if Batman had had his own movie prior to that film. Mm -hmm. I think this movie too, if, if they were concerned with a rich supporting cast, would have benefited from having some of these characters appear in earlier films. Diablo was the closest one out of all of them to kind of have some kind of uh, humanizing moment, but they still, I think, made him too much of a, of a caricature. If they wanted the supporting cast in this to be rich and diverse and interesting, it needed to be more developed, but I don't necessarily know that there was room for it in this movie, which is why I'm saying maybe it would have been beneficial to have it in other films prior to this, and then we see how, oh my goodness, these villains from this really cool DC EU films that we've already seen are now banding together as our hero. Like, I think- Yeah, okay, know, yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. I think that's probably it. Like, again, I think they maybe rushed too much into uh, certain things and they wanted to get like these big team-ups involved right away. DC EU needs to be focusing on building its own franchise, its own teams, and getting to that same point. Who cares if you're behind 
in terms of the chronology of it all, if they're good. Like, it doesn't need to be that yeah. you release your Suicide Squad when they're releasing their Guardians. Who cares? As long as the movies are good, people are going to show up. It's superheroes. You're not going to lose your audience if you're making good movies. Moving on to our final category, which is what impact did this film have on you? And for me, this is a love it. I thought the soundtrack was one of the best soundtracks in a comic book movie not named Guardians of the Galaxy. It was amazing. <laughs> it was a really great soundtrack. Had a lot of good tunes in there. Uh, this movie was funny, too. It had a lot of good humorous moments. Um, I liked the tone of the of the film. My impact was a love it. Um, I agree with you on the soundtrack 100%. I also already mentioned the humor score was... I mean, we haven't had a DC film come even close to this number on a humor score. Mine was This is only the third DC movie, though, and actually it's like... So it's been better than... Uh, our, our Marvel movies would, would have been as far as the third one. The third one was, what, Captain America? No, Iron Man 2. I'd say it had some, it had some impactful moments. The moment where Floyd Lawton wants to shoot Batman and his daughter jumps in front of the gun. I mean, that is, that's a gut-wrenching moment. And yeah. Will Smith plays it beautifully. Like, I mean, you and the audience might not be tearing up, but you just, you see and feel the impact that he's feeling right Yeah, then. most of the heart was between Floyd and his daughter, uh, especially when... He finds out that she's been writing him all the time, and that you know finally he's going to go and try to do something good for his daughter. So he's like, so if I knows my daughter, you know, knows that I wasn't a piece of shit, and that I did something good. Well, and even the moment when uh, Harley Quinn thinks Joker has died, and she's crying, and then all the guys find her on top of the car, and she's trying to put on her usual Harley Quinn front, but they can see that she's been upset. I mean, even that moment. Mm. Yeah, she's a villain, but she's human, and and it was those kind of human moments of these characters that really, I think. Elicited good heart moments. So my final score for Suicide Squad was a 71. And my final score was a 92. Which gives Suicide Squad a total score of 81.5. Uh, if I had to give it one between love it or leave it, I would give it a love it, even though I had more leave it's as far as the whole thing. And I think that has a lot to do with how likable the leads are and just kind of the impact that the, the film had on me as I was watching it. Uh, and I just, it was just an enjoyable film. And I think the rewatchability is high in this one. For me, out of the five categories, I had three love it's, two leave it's. I would say this one's a rent it. So if you like this video, go ahead and uh, consider subscribing to our channel and join our viewing party and give this video a thumbs up. That way more people can find it and the search rankings and everything like that helps us out. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, and let us know your thoughts on Suicide Squad, what you thought about it, if you loved it, if you know, if there's certain parts you'd like, nah, leave that, leave that alone. Like this character wasn't so great or, you know, certain parts you loved or love. Leave it in the comments. We'd love to talk about it. So 81.5 was our final score for Suicide Squad with a love it from us, but... It's definitely not definitive.